All right, today I show you how simple it is to set up multiple computers to run multiboxing. Yes, there has been a lot of talk lately about fantastic processors coming out that have billions of cores, and to be honest, that is the best way to multibox is all on one PC, but you know, not all of us have unlimited resources and we want to multibox too. So, what you can do is you can just keep throwing more and more computers at the problem and you will be um you will be multiboxing any number of boxes eventually and it is uh really quite simple using my system 5 minute multiboxing to get started adding computers to the mix. So here we go. All right, the first thing that you need to do is connect your hotkey net sessions to each other. And this is about the most complicated thing you're going to do today. The hotkey net tool has inherent and organic multi CPU um, client server functionality. So go to on your main go to options connection settings are you connecting PCs yes this PC is a server um, leave the port the way it is I think it's set at 1025 by default it kinda tells you what this PC's IP address is that's cool done apply done it'll say this will take place when you restart the program go ahead and restart it and um, then go to your second computer and your third computer and your fourth computer how many however many you have I'm using team viewer in this demo to show you the uh, desktop of the second computer as we're running along you don't need team viewer uh, you can use team viewer for other purposes it's a very useful tool but um, you don't need team viewer for this at all uh, what you're gonna be doing is going over and doing things on your second computer when you see me working on the the team viewer computer so I'm blowing up the second computer right now this is the second computer um, this is hotkey net also now when you run hotkey net guys when you run hotkey net here's what I want you to do I want you to right mouse on it right mouse on the shortcut and say run as administrator you have to do this. You have to make sure HockeyNet is running as administrator. Otherwise, it'll sit there. It'll act like it's doing something, but it won't pop any windows because it doesn't have permission to pop windows. So keep that in mind if your windows aren't popping. So we're going to go to Options, Connection, Settings on the remote computer, one of them. Are you connecting PCs? Yes. This PC is a client. Server's IP address. Well, that's the IP address from the other computer you saw in that window let's go back options connection settings on the original P this that's the servers IP address and back we go second computer servers IP address put that in there port 1025 make sure the ports are the same I'll uh, I'll say a few things about ports later you don't have to understand it right now this PC's IP address okay memorize that you're gonna need that later so your server doesn't care what this PC's IP address is this PC will tell the server what his IP address is but we are gonna need to know all of our side computers IP addresses in the end and I'll tell you why in a little bit okay so you just hit apply it'll say changes will affect when you take effect when you restart the program you restart it with admin and this is what you should see this is the magic alright this client is connected to the server and it shows the server IP address and um, if you go over to your server your main computer it will say this server is connected to one client now you can add as many of these as you want all right you can add as many computers as you want I don't think there's a limit so so have fun finding every freaking computer in your house and throwing it into the multi box army 
and adding adding um, as many processors as you can to the mix okay so now you've got hotkey net configured it, they're con they're connected you can in theory multibox with these two computers um, if you know how to do it but you don't have to know how to do it all you gotta do is go to your tune list and I've created some tunes here for the purpose of this demo um, and set up your tune list in multi box fashion in multi CPU fashion alright notice the box lines are the same as, as you usually see them by default everybody gets an M at the end of their name right you know that's the basic grade control alt M now notice there's a, something a little different about my um, multi box and in fact you know what this is wrong I'm I switched to 1k so I'm gonna change this to a 1k monitor I switched to 1k to make the words bigger so account password character name role and raid letter now notice I put a command here that you don't normally see computer which computer by number and then the IP address of that computer if I had another computer I might have a line that says this computer 3 is IP address 192.168.0.42 all right right now we're only going to do computer two computers today now notice I've got 10 people in my raid but I put a 2 after some of the raid letters that means put those guys on computer 2 put those guys over here on the second computer as simple as that you just put a number after their raid letter if I had a third computer that would be a 3 for some of them alright so then you go to your World of Warcraft directory and you run 5mb.bat answer yes to the questions and then reload boink reloaded couple of notes you have to use the slow 5mmb.tickle on the discord server all right don't download the fast one it doesn't work with multi cpu you download the slow one second you do have to reload the script whenever you make changes all right you should know that um, so now that we have loaded the script we are ready to hit control lock on and try and pop open our 10 windows control alt M Ooh, it's happening it's happening it's happening somebody's coming all right this looks really good okay now use your tilde key as you always do and click login for the first time well obviously I've logged in to this account just before this uh, and created some characters so that um, you don't have to watch me create characters but yes you would have to create all your characters and um, wow look at that the second computer logged in much faster than my first computer probably because I'm encoding a stream maybe I don't know all right and now you're in your main um, hit alt 4 once hit 0 to party up am I partied up do I have 10 one more oh yeah hit 0 again to make everybody assist by the way um, alt 4 make everybody follow look at all those warlock babes following I picked the warlock because the female reminds me the most of my wife I guess a human female would have reminded me more but I'm horde come on give me give me a break um, and then go talk to this guy get your level 60 get your gear for free and start multi-boxing on two computers and now if you look at the second computer down here when I press the spacebar I'm over on my second computer 
Everybody's jumping. Everybody's jumping. Everybody's jumping. All right. Now, one thing, one thing I do want to highlight, okay? When you start using multiple CPUs, multiple computers, not multiple CPUs, multiple computers, um, it is really nice to have Mouse Without Borders. Mouse Without Borders, I'll uh, put a link to it in the downloads along with a link to TeamViewer and a link to uh, another subject that we need to wrap up with. Mouse Without Borders allows you to move your mouse to another computer as if they were all one big desktop. Watch my mouse move off the edge of this computer over to the uh, second computer. Now you can't see my mouse on TeamViewer but you can see how I'm highlighting windows on the second computer okay I am highlighting windows I can see my mouse on the second computer it's there all right so all the computers they act as one and you I can type over there on the second computer I can say oh yeah I'm gonna do a slash in it boom and I did a slash in it by typing on my main computer keyboard so mouse without borders makes multi CPU a dream. It it, it basically makes uh, it seem like you've got one giant supercomputer, and that's what you should have. One giant supercomputer. You should you should borrow everybody's computer. You should go to people's garages and pull their old computers out and just throw them. Make banks of computers. And um, uh, comment in in the comments and tell me uh, how many you have strung together all right now that brings me back to the final sticking point and I'm gonna hit control alt O and kill all my kill all my windows the final sticking point is this the IP address all right yes the IP address when you have a bunch of computers in your house what their behavior is by default is to have the router assign an IP address to the computer. Okay, the router will lease what they call lease an IP to a particular computer. It will try to give that computer the same IP all the time. But oftentimes when you turn a computer off for a long time and some scrub millennial comes into your house and gets on your your um router and you know wants to do Pinterest um, they'll get that lease and your computer will be kicked off that IP address alright you can't really run a multiboxing operation that way you can't keep trying to uh, uh, keep up with um, what the IP addresses are on the other computers and so I need to tell you how to permanently set the IP address on your computer. Now I'm going to provide some links below that show you how to set what's called a static IP address. Static means unchanging. To set a static IP address on any computer. I don't set a static IP address on my main because my main is always on. It never is going to lose its lease. But my side computers, they get shut off once in a while and uh, often and they will lose their lease and they will change so I always set a static IP address on my side computers and I'm gonna show you how to do that kinda I don't really know if I'm gonna show you how to do that actually okay let's go through team viewer to the second computer alright now we wouldn't do this in team viewer I'm just doing this for the purposes of the broadcast um, but we are gonna tend to go to the second computer and set up the IP address um, so we go to normally what you do is you go to the start button right mouse on computer properties um, go to device manager um, network adapters double click on it and then you go to uh, I think it, uh, it, it advanced what am I doing wrong? No, you don't do this. You don't do this. I'm, I'm totally forgetting how to do this. Uh, you go to er, 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 er. network control panel. Let's <laughs> follow the guide below, guys. Gosh, it's been it's been a while since I've done this. So, and the Heimers is kicking in. Uh, where's my mouse? 
Okay. Boink. Control panel. Um, network and internet. That's what I wanted. Network and internet. Um, view network status. View network computers and devices. Is it computers and devices? I think it's computers and devices. No. Network and sharing center. That's what it is. Change adapter settings. That's where I wanted to be. Forget all of that other stuff, man. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, go to properties. All right, we made it. So you're gonna double click on the uh, TCP IP IPv4, and you're gonna do this shit. All right, change all this. Now, the one thing you gotta know is what your default gateway is. You can do that pretty easily by just doing this. Go to start, get the command window up by saying CMD. Ah, team viewer didn't like me in the scroll lock button. CMD, get a command window up. All right, and then just do IP config uh, slash um, show. Okay. I'm not going to do that for you right now because then you'll see my actual IP and I don't want to show you that. So um, you're not going to get to see my IP, but you will be able to see what the uh, default gateway is um, in your little local area network. So set all this up just like this. Hit OK. Reboot your machine and boom, you got a static IP address. And I'm... Um, in the link below, I'll also show you the Windows 10 way to do it, and um, you will be uh, up and running. All right, oh, oh, those are the things right there. Those are the things. Do do do. Okay, uh, hope this helps. We're going to um, talk next time about creating links in Microsoft Windows so that you only need one smextend.lua to run all of your side CPUs.